Good morning, Annabelle. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, it's good to see you all today morning. And uh, Annabelle, we can uh, give uh, people five minutes to start uh, to join in, and then we can start. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all right, Michelle. Good. Good. Great. Uh, good morning, Annabelle. Good morning, participants. Uh, welcome to today's module. And happy customer service week. Yeah, yeah. We are glad to have you here. Annabelle, I don't know if you're in. And uh, we can start shortly. 
we have a quorum. I am in. That's so great. We can start. Yeah, I, I believe we can start. I believe you need no introduction. Annabelle, you've been here with us before for module one. And uh, for those who did not, were not able to join us for module one, this is Annabelle Waruguru. She's a trained uh, consultant with 11 years experience, and she'll be taking us through customer relationship management. And uh, this is fitting, seeing as it's customer service with Annabelle. So this should be really interesting. We look forward to it. Yeah. You can take it thank away. You very, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle, for that great introduction. Uh, indeed, it's a, it's a real pleasure to have everyone joining in this very, very special week where, where we, are, we, are, we, are, we are remembering our customers. I hope I can be heard clearly. Michelle? Yes, you're clear, Annabelle. Yeah, very true. So I'm saying that this is a, a very great week for us because we are we, we also remember that it's our it's our customer relation week. And we also want to tell you that we value you. And that is actually that's how I want to start by reminding you that we value you at the Diamond Trust Bank and at Kenya Bankers. So for those of us who have joined in. Just remember that you're very, very dear to us, and we really, really appreciate you in the customer week. Actually, as we planned this, uh, when we did the program with Michelle and Nazmira, one of the things that uh, oh, we, we could put in consideration is the fact that this is a customer care week, and therefore we felt that let's let's discuss issues around customers, even as we reflect on ourselves as, as clients and also us as maybe uh, being the recipients of the clients that we interact with on a daily basis for our businesses. So welcome once again, even as you continue uh, enjoying this Customer Care Week. So I want to start by introducing our module objectives, which is uh, around customer relations. It's about that customer, who we are, and the customer that we also interact with on, on our daily basis, and the customer who, who, who has brought our businesses where they are today and uh, I want to just tell you that the discussions will be around that it's a module that it's a combination of the practices and the strategies that you can use to manage and analyze our customer interactions throughout the customer life cycle and I want to stop I'll pause here by saying that the customer relations issues are, 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 are very vast they're very wide and we can talk about the customer the whole of today, Michelle. We can go on till evening talking about the customer. Tomorrow we wake up, continue talking about the customer. And the whole of this week, we can just be talking about the customers. Why? Because the issues to do with customers are very pertinent for the success of our wealth or of our organizations. And actually for the world at large, because uh, as we always say, whenever we take you through these programs, that you as uh, I and you as the SMEs, we are very, very important in the economy of, of the whole world, actually. So we are doing this so that uh, our products and services can be of relevance and can be of they can they can make an impact as it's meant to be and and be able to change lives and be able to change businesses and also to be able to enjoy profitabilities uh, pro profitability in our businesses. So these discussions will be around that about the insights to uh, to enable us improve our relationships also be able to detain the customers that we have and also be able to drive sales growth. Because I believe everyone who opens a business, who starts a business, would want to experience, would also want to, to enjoy the profits for businesses to grow. No one wants to, to remain at one place. And what makes this possible is that relationship with our customer. And that's why this is very, very important to, to us, even as we make those reflections in this week so that we can we can you know we can decide to improve on what you are doing and so that you can also be able to enjoy our businesses so throughout this discussion throughout the two hours that we are together in this session we'll also be talking about uh, appreciation of the needs and the benefits and process of creating long-term value for our individual clients 
So what is that uh, it's, it's about that we'll be talking about who the customer is. It's very important to also take a reflection on who the customer is and what is that customer made of. Many times we, 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 may, we may just be going about our businesses. We may just be going about our daily operations without really to put into mind who is this customer and why are they this important for the well-being of my organization or of my business. And therefore, this is something that we really want to take into consideration. We also want to be talking about the customer expectations and how to also build loyalty. We'll also be talking about effectively communication, you know, as a way of building loyalty, as a way of meeting those expectations and the needs of the customer. How do we then effective, effectively communicate with our clients? We'll also, in the, in the short time, be able to talk about managing complex situations in customer relations. This we can also, it, it's also something that we can discuss at length, but we will we, we'll try and, and bring it and, and do it in summary. And so that's about it. And then thereafter, we shall conclude. So starting with asking then who is our customer or talking about or looking at the customer world, the world of the customer, what is it? What, who is that customer? Do I really take time to understand who, what is expected by the customer? Even as I talk about who the customer is, I'm also going to ask us, have I been customers? Am I a customer to someone else? And when you are a customer to someone else, what is it that you, you expect of that person? Well, how, how does it feel to be a customer of somebody else? And that's why we are saying at this point, because the, the, word, the word customer is very, is very broad. We, we need to think outside the box. You know, at many times you may, you may reflect on the customer as the one that you are serving. I can say today that, I can comfortably say today that I'm a customer of Diamond Trust Bank. I'm a customer of Kenya Bankers. Uh, being, 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 the, being a resident or being a provider of the services you're doing to, you're, you're providing to you and I through this program. But is that all? If I don't think outside the box, then I would not think about tomorrow's customer. So we need to think out of the box that you're not just considering that customer who I'm dealing with today, the one who I'm, I'm relating with currently. That may be a, is, is, is indeed a very important customer, but am I thinking about tomorrow for the growth of the business? Am I thinking about the, the future? Am I just nurturing what I have and then I don't get to, 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 to figure? Then what next? And how about uh, who, who, are, who are the others? Who are the influencers to these customers so that they can also beat my tomorrow's customers? So whenever you're talking about the customer, we need to think about it very broadly. Think about, get out of our comfort zone and think about how we can influence others, influence others who we have through our touch points with our very, the, 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 the very customers that we are serving today so that we now can move beyond customer service. And this, in these discussions, we are also going to be differentiating or, or, or putting to mind what is, the, what is the actual customer experience? What makes our customers have loyalty? With us, what is that that makes our customers want to continue being our, you know, uh, being continue relating with us? And so, going back to our customer, we also say that many times you often refer to customers as those who have a relationship with our suppliers as clients, those that we, we, we interact with. Your banker is your customer. To you, to 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 your to the to the, to the bank. You are also their client. So are your client to, to, to each other. Anyone who receives your services, anyone who receives, who, who is impacted by your services is your customer. So even as we appreciate our customers in this customer care week, let us also remember the people who also make our businesses, who also impact on the operations of our businesses as our customers. And our customers also uh, in, 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 in include those who are inside of organizations, those that we work with. So Michelle, please tell um, Asmaira, happy customer care week, because they, she's also a customer to you. Tell the same to whoever else that you work with. Appreciate one another, because the well-being of the customer is very, very broad. So it has to be, it has to be the, for, for, for it to be complete, there are many people who are involved in there. In the, in, the, in the affairs of the customer. 
Therefore, anyone who you work with is your cattle. In your in other departments, your people, the people that you you, you see every maybe not in, not necessarily every day, even those that you see once a month, they also your cattle. Then you also have the external customers, and many times this is what you consider as our customers. Those ones that are outside of our organizations, our our suppliers, those that do business with us, our partners, and the and the recipients of us. So they are also our customers. Like I say, we also need to be very broad. We also look look up, we need to think just beyond the one that we are impacting on immediately as any other as as even to be inclusive. So the customer is anyone who walks into your office or workstation to see a service. So that's one component of a customer, the external customer, yeah? And so when you impact on this customer who, who walks into your, to your forward, who seeks your services, then they are able to impact on others who may not have, who may not have a certain business in view. And that's where we are saying, the customer contact, when you impact on that one, who walks into your business to seek services? When you impact on that one, who, 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 who maybe has heard about your services and has not maybe done business, but maybe they are considering to do business with you. That is where the rubber meets the road. And that's where this journey begins. That customer contact, be it on phone, be it in, uh, person to person, be it on email, in whichever way that you impact on your customer, that is where the, the journey starts. That's where the wheel hits the road, the, the tarmac and the journey begins. And so as we interact directly with this customer, then we, decide, we, we determine how they perceive of our services. The, our interactions, and you're going to see more about this when you talk about customer experience. A customer has, the way that they feel, there's a way that I, they, they, my interaction with the customer determines what they feel, how they can raise your service to them. Are they getting excellent service? Are they getting poor service? Are they getting something in between? This is something that we have to note every so often that our clients will always have an opinion. Whether we like it or not, our customers will always have opinions and so, as we start, as early as now, I want to start by saying that you might as well then learn how to create positive opinions in those customers. And let me tell you, in order to, to really make a client happy or to make a client feel, you know, feel um, satisfied, the word satisfaction is a very pregnant character. For someone to say, I'm fully satisfied. If you make a call to to, to them to the to, to our call centers before every before a customer leaves, there is always a question that you ask: Is there anything else you'd like me to do for you? And whenever that customer tells you that I am okay, I don't have a concern currently, then you can count, you can take a brief deep breath and say, I have done those things. But if a customer has a need, a concern after the other, a concern after the other, then you might as well relook yourself. So what am I saying here? That we better learn, or we, and, and, and I'm also saying this as I tell myself and I remind myself that I've got to really satisfy my customers. I've got to really do what it takes to do what's within me. At times, what's, the, the, uh, certain things are beyond you in respect to the organization, and especially when the organizations are, are large. You may not be in control of every interaction that you make with your customer, but whatever you do, but whatever you, however you contact or however you relate with your customers, you would, you would want to have it on top of your, of, of, of your mind that you, you will be a game. You put the a game to our customers. And many times whenever I take through customer service uh, trainings, I always tell people, why do many times you ask customers? Then why always the customer? Why is it always that you have to be the customer? Even as you said this, Remember, you are also a customer. Ladies, those who, 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 who have our hair, who take our hair somewhere, you, 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 every once in a while you're going to the salon, either to have your hair braided or to have your hair washed, or one of those things. As the gentleman, you also go to our barbers to have our hair cut. We also go to the hotel every once in a while. You're not always eating our meals at home. 
as you come to work, if, you, if you're using a matatu, there is a, there is a, there, there is that that interaction with the driver, with the with the with the, with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the conductor. So there is that. I'm trying to show us that every once in a while, every every so often we are customers ourselves. And then there's also that aspect of things you will move. I want to say that it's not always about a customer. Then you remember that you also are a customer. You have been a customer. You have been impacted. The reason maybe you are you have stuck to that. Let me use the the salon is you have stuck to them is because they meet your needs. The reason you have stuck with your banker. The reason you have stuck with us as their on trust bank is because I believe we are impacting your services. And maybe you have been able to tell other people about us, and that is why you are still on board. And that is why we also believe that you're going to be our future client. That, that is why we are we are confident that you're going to be our brand, our brand ambassador. So very, very critical that uh, we make that contact. We make that contact with our clients so that they can be the rubber means etc. And that is why I'm saying all this is because there is no second chance for a better or for, for, for a for a for a good or a better first impression. Just think about the, the 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 impression probably you got when when you when you did when you're talking about the, the services that, that you that you get today. How was it? Were you impressed? Were you impressed when you when you met when you went to, to maybe your service provider, the current service provider that you use, or what is it that impacted on you? What is that that really impressed you about the Amon Trust Bank? What is it that really impressed you? About the person go for your services. What is it that really impressed you about the, the person who provides, if it's a lady who does your, your clothes? You know, all those things, because the, a human being has many needs, and those needs you cannot meet them yourself. Yeah, at a certain time you're you're working with others to make these needs, and this is what makes life complete. So whatever we do, whatever contact we make with our clients. We might as well make and show that we give them a good experience that will give them that impression, that first impression. And it's never too late if you, if you have not made an impression on someone, you will still keep working. And it's not that when I make an impression on a client and then bring them on, but then I stop impressing them. No, it's a continuous journey. I said when the rubber beats the road, it's just the beginning of the journey. The journey continues. And that is why every year we are celebrating the customer care week because it's very important for us to keep appreciating our customers. I believe many of us, because of what I have said, the human, the human needs are very broad and you cannot be the provider of those needs. There are also other people who, who meet those needs. I'm sure you have received many messages, like I have on my phone, you are appreciated. Oh, you are a good service provider. It's your internet provider. They are remembering you, if it is your, uh, your, 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 your the, the provider of your, Mobile, mobile service provider, they are remembering you. If it is your, your banker, they are remembering you. So you and I are, need to be reminded that we matter. And so that impression, even if we make it the first time, even if you brought a customer, you impressed a customer and you brought them on board, you should not stop there. So there is no second chance. Sometimes you may say that, and whenever we miss on the first, on the first impression, then you want to continue impress in them so that you again you don't lose that. Why so? It's because our customers don't care what you know until they know you care. And this also is a very uh, a very good very big statement and a very broad statement. When your customer knows that you care, you see that that one message that you receive be reminded that you matter. Or maybe let me let me say for those who are of us who are there when we started saying happy customer care week, you know, just remembering you that, reminding you that you care for you. I believe it makes a difference. Until, you know, they don't care about anything else until they know that you care. And when they know that you care, then they begin to have a relationship. with you. Then they begin a journey of, 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 of working together or, or a journey of appreciation and a journey of growth and a journey of profit which is what you are all looking to achieve through our clients. So we have an opportunity to, to make uh, profit to, to, to grow our businesses to just nurturing our clients, to just showing them that we care. And Mary Angelo said that uh, people will not forget. People, many times, you forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, but they will never, 
forget how you made them feel. Woe unto you if you made them feel, you, have, you give them a negative a feeling, they'll not forget it. But if you made them, if you made an impression on them, if you made them feel happy, if you made them feel appreciated, if you made them feel loved, so then you are at a better place to, to, to make, to, 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 make to, have, to have that lasting effect in their mind. So this is to say that we got to really be concerned about how we take care of our clients, how we make them feel, because as uh, Peter Drucker said, there is one valid definition of business and which is its fundamental purpose, to create and keep the customer. These are not statements by Annabelle, these are not statements by Diamond Trust Bank or Kenya Bankers, these are great thinkers of the 20th and 21st century. So the issue of creating and keeping the customer has been something that we have, we have always, uh, which has always mattered in business, in the world, where someone makes you feel valued, where someone makes you feel that you matter, where they not only want to create you, but they also want to keep you. Because the customer is the only profit center we have. So we have that opportunity of building our profits through caring for, for our clients, and it is not difficult. And what we also say that if you do not take care of our customer, someone else is real, someone else will. As I started, I said you're also going to share insights on how we cannot, we can, we cannot, we can take care of our clients in a cutthroat competition world. Because today everyone is, is, is looking at how they can make. They, they, they can they can get they can create and keep a customer. So if you okay, wako, someone else takes them. You doze a little, someone else takes them. And I believe many of us we have maybe been recipient of this. You have received customers who have not who have not been uh, who have not been well taken care of by others. We may also have lost customers to others. And how important then it is to have that feedback. You also take take note and see what we may not have gone well, so that you can nurture this profit center that that we have the opportunity we have to grow our businesses through our clients. So the customer then becomes the most valuable and precious asset that we have. So we are sitting on a gold mine of customers, of reaching customers every day, and people who are in. Um, if there are people who have taken advantage of this knowledge and know that uh, the, the valuable, the uh, customer is valuable and precious. And there are people who will look for clients in, in, in every sphere of life. When you sit next to someone in a matter to, they start talking to you about their products. When you meet someone in a lift, they start talking about their products. And you have had giants, uh, organizations that have become giants, but just by empowering their team, their team members to bring customers on board, to create customers. But I wonder then how, how the, 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 whether they just create them or they also keep them. So we are saying that there are people who have known, who have made, taken note of this and they have taken advantage of looking for any opportunity to create a customer. Okay, there are some who overdo it, but here we are saying people have known that the customer is valuable, the customer is precious. So whoever you have, Whoever you have right now as your customer, take care of them. Whoever you are as part, whoever you are, you are targeting as your customer, do what you need so that you need so that you impress them, so that you bring them on board. And why so? All this we are talking about, we are, we are still looking at the world of customers. We are living in a world that is no longer facing a shortage of goods or services, but a shortage of customers. That's another a great thinker in the 20th and 21st century. The feeling important. You say that the world is not, it doesn't have, it has enough goods and services to be provided, but the customer are not what we really uh, is lacking in the world. And that is why you need to take care of what you have so that others don't take the risk. So, having looked at who the customer is, and we haven't also seen why we need to be very, very concerned about our customers, this has been the first section. Then I want to look at how to build loyalty and what customer satisfaction really. What is the customer satisfaction? What is it that I would call customer satisfaction and why does it matter? 
Now, customer satisfaction is that overall feeling of contentment in the customer interaction. And I say that since we now know how important this uh, a customer interaction is, or since we already know how important uh, interacting effectively with our customers is, because others, if we don't do it, others will, then we need to have to, to nurture that, you know, that moment, that that type of interaction. And good customer service or, or satisfaction. When you this when you provide good service to your clients, it results in customer satisfaction, it results, it results in return customers, it results in growth of business. And that's why I say that is the only profit center that we have. We have the opportunity of bringing our profits to our clients. And when our profits, when we have when our profits, our businesses are profitable, then our businesses also grow. We are still looking at satisfaction, and we are saying that being able to meet customer expectations is a very, very essential part of robust customer service department and the business at large. And so we want to now to be able to interact effectively with our clients. We need to understand what their expectations are. We need to meet them. We not only need to meet them, but exit them. And we not only need to do, meet them, exit them, but also do so consistently. So that then you can enjoy happier customers and healthier bottom line. And a healthy a healthier bottom line includes that profitability, the growth. And you know, up to a point you are saying now, we can comfortably say that our businesses have gotten very because every every business and this was we were taken through when we did the the, the 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 first phase of this training when we talked about strategy and business planning. Uh, we always have there's a, there's a certain way that there's a certain we 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 are there's something we aspire for our businesses. We have a five year plan. By the time you get on the five year, on on, on your fifth year, would it, would you say comfortably that you are enjoying the profitability that your business has grown to where you wanted it to be, or do you still have a lot of work to do? And when we do, we did our, our first phase. I also remember saying that these last three years have been very difficult for any business globally because of the impact COVID-19 has had on, on, on all of us. So when you say, what you're saying is that whoever we have, we need to nurture them, you need to enjoy a healthier bottom line. And so that, and this now is what guarantees business continuity. And as we talk, when we talk about all this, we are also saying that the expectations is not to say that now I know how customer B, customer A or customer B, uh, they, they are now know the, the, the needs of those, what I want to, and, and, and I believe you have experienced this as people who are currently in business, customer expectations are an ever evolving process. It keeps on going around. And that is where creativity comes in. And I did this when we did the, the, the entrepreneurship module. Creativity is very, very, uh, very critical in business. You cannot keep on doing business the same way that you did three years ago, the same way that you did uh, 10 years ago. You need to, to also be concerned about the needs of the customer and be, be meeting these needs uh, in, in, in a continuous process. And so when the expectations are met are not met, then dissatisfaction results. And no one wants to. One, no one wants their customers to experience the opposite of satisfaction. So the quality then of customer service is determined by your ability to meet expectations. So you might as well, even as you now think about keeping, uh, creating and keeping the customer, meeting these, these expectations on a continuous basis. And that is why later on I'll be talking about how to communicate with customers and why it is important that we communicate with customers. And we may have the greatest team, we may have all the base, we, have, we may have great departments in place, but if our customers don't perceive our, 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 their needs as met or don't feel satisfied, or if our customers are dissatisfied and their needs are not met, remember these needs keep changing, then our reputation will suffer. Our businesses will not, will not grow and the profits will still remain the same. And so since the future of these companies, of all the organizations, lies in keeping customers happy, then we need to keep thinking about ways to elevate ourselves above the competition. I say the competition is always waiting. If you don't take care of your customer, your, the competitor will do so very well and, ex, and, and exceed the expectations of that customer so that they can take, create them and keep them. So then you should then consider doing uh, what gives the customer, what is it that your customer does not get elsewhere. This is something that you need to keep thinking. And that's why I say we've got to be creative. We've got to keep on uh, being in touch with the needs of our plan every so often. 
we also need to follow up and learn people like we are doing this week, even when we they don't purchase from us, or even when they are not become our clients. It's just the fact that maybe you had an interaction with them, follow them up, thank them for having given you that opportunity. Who knows tomorrow they may become your client. Then you also need to give our clients what is totally unexpected. What is it that you can do in your business that is totally unexpected? And this now before goes around them. We are only able to build loyalty with our customers if they are, we understand our needs and understand where they are coming from. And I want to also remind you that if you don't do it, someone will do it. And so I also I want us to share our thoughts on the chat, chat box, chat box regarding uh, customer satisfaction. Because our customers have their rights. And maybe we ask ourselves, what are those rights our customer has? What is it that that customer wants they come when they come to us? What is it? I want us to just that thought. You know, I just want to make a ask to make a reflection wherever we are. When a customer comes to you, what is it that they want? And I, and we are just going to share, we're just going to share this our, our thoughts, but towards the end of it, as we go, as as, as we as we make a conclusion on this module. We will also have gotten insights on that. What is it that the customer wants when they come to you? But as early as now, I want us to just share those thoughts on customer satisfaction. And maybe your understanding of satisfaction. And then you also want to uh, 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 ask, or maybe say something, ask yourself, are there things that I feel we do not, uh, are there things that you feel we do not understand our clients? Are there things that we don't know what they want when they come to us? What to do? What are those? What, to, what are your thoughts around that? And this is in regards to what customers really want. Why so? We have seen here the profit center. Why so? We have seen that if you don't take care of them, someone else will. We have seen that they, they, they are the greatest asset that you have. Then you might as well then take note of what is it that they want to come from us so that then you can meet those needs and be able to receive those needs. And so that you can satisfy and so that you can wow our customers. And so that you can give them that good experience when they come to us so that they can be able Stay on with us, and that is now how we build loyalty with our clients. So I want to just as we as we go along, keep keep sharing those thoughts on the chat box, and when we take a break, we'll be able to look at what you are. Baramon is saying that you and I need to keep taking notes or take making reflection on what customers want they come when they come to us, on what our cast what what the needs of the, of our customers are, because these needs are ever new. But for you to have that memorable interaction with your plan, what is it that you really want? So we can, we can share that. We've already, we've already, we've already, we've already looked at that. And we're also going to, even as we share those thoughts, as you as you ask ourselves, what is it that a customer wants when they come to us? And also whether we understand our plans or not, and we're going to share this towards the end. Have we lost customers? Even as you are saying, who is my customer? Have we ever lost that? Have you ever lost a customer? Personally, in my journey as a consultant, there are times that maybe along the way, I lost I lost a client, but maybe did what I need to be to so that I could win them back. And, and, and I'm also asking myself, if I lost client ABCD and maybe I was able to win them back, and it took a long time to even win those people, such, such, such clients back. What do I have in place that, or tools that I can acquire and maintain the current customer that I have? Is it a robust service, customer service department? Is it value for my client? What is it that I'm doing? And I'm calling this ABC because it is very, very critical. For us in customer to be able to get those uh, to be able to have loyal customers to be able to meet those needs to be able to 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 understand to to be able to give them the customer direction when they come to us so that they don't get lost along the way so that they are they are satisfied so that they are not lost so that they are not taken by others wow it's a lot of work it's a lot of work for us and I know even as you continue sharing this also faith yeah, just feel free to, to say, what does it make you feel? Is it always about clients? Is it always about clients? Is it really worth it? And whenever I, I was, I can never tire to talk about clients because of, of, of the impact this has in our business. I always say, 
it is ever worth it. It is always worth it. Whenever I talk about clients for morning, evening, evening, I always say it is indeed worth it. It is always worth it. And I hope that you and I agree on this. And even as we go along, what the end you're going to share. So I want to go to the next thing, having left that, having left us with that thought of having lost our customer and also asking ourselves whether we understand what our customer want from us and also asking what is it that you as a business, your many participants, you, your business that is already existing, what is it that you're doing to acquire and So I want us now to go to the next thing, which is still around um, an extension of customer satisfaction and building loyalty. And this is on customer experience, differentiating customer experience and customer relation. So maybe at this point, you just get to ask us, what do you understand by the word experience? What is it? What is experience? Is experience something tangible? Is it something I can come and pack in a box like this and come and give you, like now it's customer. Here we can I put a, a box and put it, put a ribbon on top with colors and balloons and bring you, can I bring you experience? Just thoughts which you're hearing as we go along. What is a relationship? What is a relationship? How do you understand a relationship? Is it something that is a one-off? Is it something that is a journey? Just like we started with meeting with, with the rubber meeting the road, or is it something that has to be worked on of time on time? So this is what this session is about. I said that we've broken it down in this session so that we can be able to understand the journey of our customer better. So I want to start by appreciating or differentiating between the well, I want to start by highlighting that there is a difference in between customer experience management. Uh, with customer relationship management. And they all are very important in that journey that you have with our clients. And we are saying that the difference between the customer experience and customer relation is their scope. That one is wider than the other. That one may be a process, the other one may be a journey. So what does, what is it, what is an experience? So the experience is that result of that interaction, the result of that interaction with your client, yeah, which the, your client, your, your customer has with your business. That's the, that's, the, that's that's what experience is. And then when I asked you about whether we can tie experience with a bow tie and give it to a customer, it's not something you can do, but it's something that you can work towards. Is that result? It's a result. It's something that has been done and then it resolves that interaction. So customer experience is broader, is more holistic view of people's feelings when interacting with your business. When I interact with DDP, what feeling do I have? When I see this lovely logo, what is it that I have? What is it that I feel? What do I feel as a customer? Am I part of that organization? Or do I feel like a stranger to that organization? It is that holistic perception of your Experience with your business and your product. So you see that I say this broader. Is that perception of the experience? When I see that that logo, what does it what what does it mean to me? When I see Kenya Bankers, what does it mean to me? When I see your organization that you that you represented in this training, what is it that I feel? So it's a feeling experience, yeah. And this feeling, if I have a positive experience towards your brand, if I have a, if I have a, a, a positive feeling, a positive, a happy thought, especially in this happy, happy customer care week, it promotes loyalty. We are talking, we've come from talking about how to build loyalty, and loyalty is broad, very broad. So we promote, to promote loyalty, help you retain customer, and encourage brand and focus. So it, that's what you're looking at. It helps you retain customers who will then become your ambassadors. These are people who will talk, who will talk about your business to others because they are very, very happy with you. That is experience. Then what is experience? What is management? It's about direct and indirect contact. So the relation, the customer experience management is about that direct 
customer experience in the interaction initiated by the customer, and then in indirect in trust the passive encounters with your customers, maybe not initiated by the customer or yourself. And so we are still talking about experience that is an, has an enormous, uh, a very enormous scope. And so in that experience, when you with, both with the indirect and the direct customer experience, journeys, eh? once you are able then to eliminate the bad experiences or the negative experiences, then you provide excellent service. It is the beginning of customer satisfaction. It's the beginning of excellent service. And when you have this, and when you eliminate these bad experience issues, remember at first I said that interacting with customers is, 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 is golden. You can never trade it with anything else. It's so golden. So when you experience, when people experience that, when you interact with customers and then probably they've had, they've, they've, they've had uh, negative experiences and they share this with you because you're reaching out to them, because you have a feedback mechanism that is working. When you do this, then you eliminate those, but because it's not to say that uh, when you're very, very concerned about customer care, that the service will not go wrong. Indeed, it will go wrong, and you encounter very few people along the way. But it doesn't matter how they are, they still are your customers. So when you are able to eliminate those bad experience issues, then you get more loyal customers, you're able to boost customer satisfaction, and increase the number of customer advocates, like I said, and then you can have more ambassadors, and then your businesses can grow, and then you can enjoy profits, and you can go beyond, beyond even what you aspire to in your business. So very important for us then to be very uh, concerned about the experience that we give our clients when we, we interact with them either directly or indirectly. And what does a bad customer experience look like? Maybe so that we don't really, you know, we don't just spin it as it. That one. What does it look like? Let's 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 deal with it directly. It looks like we're looking at long wait times for customer inquiry. Maybe they've, they've, they've contacted with your people or they've contacted with you, but you've not you've not given them attention at the right time. Okay. And helpful answers to questions or requests, or when you give answers uh, to, to when you give responses. They are, they, are, they are supposed to be, yeah. I was, I was doing, I was doing, I was dealing with a, with a, I was dealing with a, with, a, with an organization recently. Telling me times their calls that they make, their their clients who make calls to them, and many times they want to say, I don't know. And I remember us uh, talking about this and really, you know even almost signing a contract that we shall never use, have a word, I don't know. All that is not in my life. Oh, Annabelle, my department. If I may interrupt, sorry. We're getting a number of complaints about sound. Maybe if you can uh, Sound. OK, I'm not clear. You are clear on my end, but I can see a few mm -hmm. customers uh, Saying the sound is not good on there. Kindly, let's all confirm that sound on our end is is good. Okay, I'm at maximum. I've noted, and um, let me try and also uh, uh, raise my pitch as I, yeah. as I as I hope that we are all we are all going to interact well. I can one I can see Sajid relating to the topic and saying bad sound equals bad experience. But <laughs> bad customer experience. We apologize okay. for that, Sajid. Uh, but let's all make sure sound on our end is also on maximum as. Yeah, I think it's, it's not because mine is on maximum. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so I'll continue also to try and raise my, my pitch. I was only saying that uh, at times helpful answers, we, 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 there are times that we give we get complaints or we get questions and we don't give helpful suggestions or we don't respond as, it, as we should. And that is also something that we, we should really uh, ensure that we don't get with our customers. Also, lacking of personal touch, not, not dealing with clients as, as, as individuals, you know, not dealing with them and as uh, generically. That, is a, that, can, that can be a bad experience. Or, or having overly generic cold service where you're not 
dealing with customers as individuals. And of course, unfriendly, we being unfriendly and not understanding the customer's needs. So that is what a bad experience looks like. And uh, we, 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 we pray that you're going, to, you're going to continue impacting on you positively as our clients, even through this training. So I've looked at customer experience. Yeah, we are still looking at both experience and relationship. So what does relationship management entail? It's that now that company long-term interconnection with your customer. So this is a journey. It's something that uh, you have to keep on working towards. Just like you have to keep on working to, towards a positive experience. So customer relationship management is that customer long-term connections with your with, with you with, with your with your organization connection with customers. All methods used by a company to nurture connection with these customers. Let me use this example of them on track. This uh, having, having uh, trainings or having interactions every Thursday is a, is, is a way of, of managing relationships so that we are connecting with our clients. And so from, the, from, our, from, our, from our relationship, from us as DTP initiating this relationship, we, we, we indeed it's our desire that we impact on you positively so that you have positive experiences, so that you eliminate all the negative experiences that you may have, and so that you can have a longer journey together. So it is the methods was used by a company to nurture those connections uh, through email, through face-to-face -face meetings, through phone calls, everything that you do to connect your customer. That's what customer relationship management is. And I know that as a, 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 there is no better way to put it than how Diamond Trust Bank has already has, has cash customer relationship uh, uh, teams that are always ready to meet clients. And I, and I know they even have account, uh, they even have relationship managers who handle individual, uh, individual clients. And this is something that a lot of uh, 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 a lot of the financial institutions are doing. So it's a great way to build on these relationships, so that uh, the customer still remains relevant, so that the journey with so that the, the, the journey with your client still remains uh, relevant, not only to you as a service provider, but also to the customer. So it comes in two forms. The relationship management comes in two forms, and that is reactive and proactive. Reactive is when you are responding, like when I've said, when you have issues that you need to respond to, when you have questions, you have concerns that you need to, to, to respond to. And proactive is where it may not necessarily to obtain issues. Being, it's going out of your way to meet the customer's needs. It's going out of your way to even uh, 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 interact with the customer so that you can know what are these revolving needs. Being proactive, going out of your way, not necessarily, not, not necessitated by a concern, by a response or a season. It is going out of your way. So relationship is also very broad and it is what leads to the experience. So the two of them go alongside together. So I want to also say then, what is it that we can do so that we can, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can enhance this relationship and management? Remember, our clients do not come to us for products or services. Yes, they do, and I know we do. We, we when we when whatever we entered in the chat box was about our services and our and, and our goods. But there is much more. The experience that experience is very critical. We can tie our services and our goods to us to the experience to the relationship that we build with them. So the good feelings that you give clients, the solutions that we give, the customers also buy that. The customers will come to us for that. So when they come to us, they will come, they will come because of the services that you offer, they will come because of the products that you have. But those good feelings, the solutions that you have, they also, to the, to the problems, understanding them, taking them as individuals, is what all also will, will, will keep them, will keep them tied to us, will keep them loyal to us. Most of the customer needs are emotional rather than logical. Think of that time when you maybe had a critical solution, a, a critical problem that you required sorted and to was sorted maybe as soon as possible. And those needs, and, and you know, you felt that uh, you were emotionally sorted. It's not something that you will forget. And that's why I say, like Mary Angelou, people will forget what you did, what you said, they will not forget how you make, make them feel. So we want to then know our customers more. 
We want to better to, 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 to be able to anticipate the needs of our customers when you deal with them as individuals anticipating those needs. And therefore, then leaves us with a very, very with, with something that we have to do regularly. That having that having that awareness of the problems, communicating regularly, not, not necessarily the problems, but just having a touch-based moment with your clients, understanding where they are at, understanding what the needs are understanding the kind of experiences they have, understanding whether the relationship the relationship management measures that you have in place, are they adequate? Would they require more? And that's why I say it's also important that you have a feedback, feedback mechanism in place that is working. And that's why I say, if you serve our customers effectively, then we have a power to affect their perception. Even as you're now including on this relationship management and customer experience. If we serve our customers directly, or we, we become proactive at anticipating their needs, or proactive at their needs, understanding their needs, understanding their journeys, then we have that power to affect the perception. And when we affect their perceptions, we, 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 I believe we will be, we'll work towards affecting the perceptions positively. So that as we interact with customers, we also, we are left with a good feeling. And when a customer has a good feeling, we have better, we also have good feelings, then we know that and we, have a, we, we make an impact on our clients. And on top of getting the profits, on top of getting the business growth, we also feel good. We are human beings. Feel good when we are working on our customer and when we are making them, and we are, when we are making them. Better. So as we continue building loyalty, these needs, how do we then make, uh, uh, manage the expectations? That we have to be doing, I said, it's a never revolving process, ever revolving. The customer needs are ever revolving. And I also want to remind you, I want to remind you something about your customers. Even as we, we purpose to interact with them, they want to be heard. When they have a need, they want to be listened to. When they have, they want to also be loved, they want something special. That which I said, would you? so that you can keep your customers in the process of building loyalty. Are you able to provide for them something that they cannot get anywhere else? What are you, what need are you meeting in that client? Are you meeting a logical need in that client or are you meeting an emotional need? Do you understand where the client is coming from? Do you understand where the customer wants to go? How long do you want to keep that client? Do you want them for life? Do you want them for a season? Questions that you have to keep asking ourselves. So then we ask ourselves, then how do we know our customers? Even as we purpose to effectively communicate with them, what are those needs? What are their concerns? What are they made of? What kind of are they? Do you understand them? Do you understand their, their way of thinking? Do you understand their, their expectations? Do you understand what is it that they expect when they come to you? And the exercise that we did as we started, this is something that we want to keep doing every so long. In order to address the needs, a customer needs to feel welcome. Remember when Saturday said who a customer is? And this uh, 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 also affect, uh, um, involves even the customers that you also work with, interdepartmental interactions. People want to feel welcome. People want to feel understood. People want to feel comfortable. Loyalty is very, very broad. People want to feel appreciated. People want to feel important. People want to feel respected. If you take care of this in every single interaction that you have, with your clients, then you can count on loyal clients, addressing their needs, being and, and ensuring that they are welcome, ensuring that they are understood, ensuring that they are comfortable, ensuring that they are appreciated and important. You are responsive to all these needs, then you can be, you can, you can, uh, you can count on having uh, having clients who are going to last, who are going to to last long with you. And in being welcome, it's just that enthusiastic greeting, smile, using their name, thanking them, and being positive. Just summarizing, just summarizing some of those things that you can do for need to meet to meet to have someone to make someone welcome. That one smile is very powerful. 
a smile is the most like is a, is a, is is a, is the biggest thing that that can can be seen of the human body and so when you have a broad smile when you have a you have a big smile everyone can see it and that's why they say a smile is it actually you can pass it on to others there is a way that it's contagious it's when you, when you see me smiling you smile back so our customers need that to be understood it's like being listened to actively paraphrasing their needs asking key questions so that you now you are able to understand where they are coming from giving positive feedback to them and also being able to empathize with them when they have difficult situations or even being able to uh, to guide them to guide them where they want to go where they would want to be a customer needs to feel comfortable how do you make a customer feel comfortable is that enthusiastic welcome which you have done when you are welcome to them you relieve anxiety through friendly communication communication with a smile yeah explaining your action calmly even when there is a difficult situation ensuring physical comfort when people visit, visit you physically a, a, a good seat a, a place where where where, where they, they, they are comfortable where they are away from noises fresh air that's how you are physically comfortable then uh, also by looking at the customer whenever you call whenever they make calls to you following up with them thereafter if maybe they had they were making an inquiry you can follow up and find out whether they have been they have already made up their mind and many times even when we make when we when we when we follow up with our customers uh, when they are when they, when they were making an inquiry you you may you may just influence their decision positively and this is this goes now beyond their their expectations providing service offers like currently being the customer care week a lot of organizations have special offers my service provide my internet provider has sent me like three offers because maybe i was delayed in 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 and switched to another provider so they want to give that that that, that makes a, a, a customer feel appreciated that you 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 remember them greeting them on their birthday greeting them on their or when it is christmas you know uh, that they're sending those 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 thank you messages or just happy you know happy jamburi day anything that makes a car clan remembering especially of the company say about the parties remembering their birthday and giving special treatment to the person god uh, this makes them feel important whenever possible and and this helps the elicit opinions so we we maybe they can even give you feedback and lastly we respect clients by listening to them not interrupting acknowledging the, 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 their emotions so, sorry acknowledging their emotions and uh, taking time to serve them asking them for advice and feedback so that's how we address the needs just making them feel comfortable making them feel respected making them feel important appreciated welcome yeah these all these addressing these needs yeah it pass great on, on on customers so even as we are asking the question that we asked what is it that the customers want when they come to us just having this these measures in place this which you have talked about this is very important making a client feel welcome understood comfortable appreciated important and respected whatever else has brought them to you then you have the loyalty of that client it's something that we would want to work on and so as you have been uh, talked a lot about uh, the experience and how to even build loyalty i want us to now see how to communicate with our clients we've already seen their needs we've already seen how to, how, how to can nurture them when we talked when we started we talked about nurturing the clients that we have so that they are not taken and valuing them and and and, and taking them as 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 an investment that they are and appreciating that in the investment and that time that they have towards us where i say they are an investment is because i say they are assets and when they are assets they 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 are of value to us we can count on them to grow our businesses so then how do we communicate 
Now, another, I want to put a disclaimer that if communication is also very, very wide. It's something that you can talk about even for days, but I'm going to narrow this discussion around communication for customer, that is for, you know, for customer relationship matters. And how also you're also going to see, even as, I, as we communicate with our clients, how do they evaluate us? How do customers evaluate us? What is it that, what, how do they gauge us? How do we score three or seven or eight or 10? What is it that they, that they, they where, where do they, what is their, their, their weighing scale like? And you're going to see certain things that customers use to weigh us so that we, we, can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can, they can become loyal or so that they can be, they can be our brand ambassadors. I, I'll be talking about communication, just like I've said, and I'm talking about uh, the, 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 the evaluation. Now, there are two main tasks of successful relations and which, are, which, which every, um, every organization should try, strive to work for or towards. And that is one communicating, that is oh, the communication. And the first, and in communication, you are saying having positive dialogue, communication as part of building the relationships as part of giving customers a great experience with our customers. So positive dialogue with our, with our clients is very critical. And then effective communication does not just stop us communicating. It stops at developing relationships. These relationships are what will be the journey, as, as I talked about. So in communication, we are, communic we are, we, we are, we, we are nurturing our interaction with them by effectively communicating and also developing ongoing relationships with our customers and our colleagues. And they are their colleagues because we are doing business with them, because we are interacting with them, because they, 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 because they are very critical with us. And they don't, it does not take a huge effort, but it, again, it does not happen instantly. It is not uh, the, the, the microwave, the microwave type where you just say, now I'm going to put press five minutes and I get my food out. That is not it. It takes effort. It takes it. It also does not. It does not happen instantly. And once it is well done, once you communicate to our customers effectively, once we build these relationships, this is what results in great, great, great empire. This is what results in continuing businesses. This is what control constitutes profitable, profitable organizations. And I'm saying also as part of effective communication. As good leaders, when we started this program, started by taking us through what I what customer, what, what business leadership is about. And I remember giving us insights on leadership. And leadership also is, is, is something that you cannot fail to take to, 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 to make use of when dealing with customers, when dealing with our great assets. So when you communicate, effective communication does not just entail doing what you say you will do. You know, assume that a customer has come to you and you tell them that I am going to do this for you. I will ensure that by the end of the day, your account is open. But it is also how you say it. It is not just what you say you will do, but it is also how you say it. So there is the saying, there is what you have promised, what you have told your client you will do, but how have you said it? Have you said it in a dismissive tone? Have you said it in a way that is that is convincing to the client? Or for client to build loyalty with us, they've got to trust us. Do you do, do they tell do you do do you, do 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 we do, do we do we say it to them in a way that uh, is inspiring to them? Gives them hope with, with in regards to doing business with us. But and then lastly how you do what you say you will do. That's what a good leader does. Takes note of those three things. First, that's what they say they will do, but also they say it in a way that, direct, that positively impacts on the client, but also they do what they will say they will do. You do not want to be one that just makes promises, empty promises, but you follow through. You follow up and ensure that what you have promised the customer you will do, you have done it. So that's what a good leader does. 
and it matters to do with our clients who are very, very, who are very important to us, then very critical that we tell them in a way we, we, pro, we make promises that are, that are real. Eh? And also we do it in a way that, that, uh, that is enticing to them. And what does communication say? I want to now take you to the basics of communication. Is listening, it's about listening to others and about being assertive. It's about being, being able to express your message and send it. That's what communication, the basic communication skill entails. Between a sender and the receiver, there is a message. The sender should be able to assert the message clearly so that the receiver is able to hear and the receiver also listens receive the recipient, they should be able to listen to, to, to this message that it can make sense to them. And in between the sender or, and, 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 and receiver, there may be barriers. What are those barriers that you have in your organization that come in between you um, communicating effectively with your clients? Have you been able to eliminate those barriers? Is it in your team members? Is it in your time? Is it in the strategy we have uh, recently? Uh, Francis through, took us through a uh, very rich, uh, very rich ways of, of, of reaching our, uh, our our clients, digital marketing, and many other ways. So all these, have you been able to to eliminate those barriers so that your customer, who is the receiver of your of your messages or you, of your communication, gets what they should get, and uh, there, there, there there is no there is no <clears throat> there is nothing that comes in between what they are meant to receive and what they're to them. And still about communication. I've talked about the sender and the receiver. Now, I want to, to take you through what is it that you hear, even as you also listen to me. You're hearing my tone of voice, there is a local clarity. There is a verbal expressiveness that I'm able to express the verb, the, the, the words clearly and the clarity of the words. There is no interference. Sometimes we have interference from the mother language where you instead of L, you say R. Sometimes you say H instead of you know all those. Those are when you're talking about clarity, it's 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 void of all that interference. Now that constitutes 40% of the message. So what you hear is 40% of this message that I've talked about between the sender and the receiver. So 40% of the message is important to hear, the tone of voice, the vocal clarity, and verbal expressiveness. Then what you see or feel, what you see, there is a hearing, there is a feeling. There is a facial expression. So whenever you're making a communication with your client, the fa your facial expression, if you say it or you address and grooming, you, 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 uh, speaks volume. Your posture, your body language, whenever there is physical communication, your eye contact, your touch, your gesture, that con con constitutes 50% of the message. So 40% of the message that you send is important to hear. And when there is physical, when there is physical uh, communication, the see or feel is 50% of the message. Now, what is remaining is 10%. That's in the words. So the words that we say only have a 10% weight. The rest in what people hear, the rest in what, in, in what people see or feel. What am I saying? As we communicate with our clients, let us, be not, let us not forget to be very particular about what clients hear, what, uh, what uh, clients see or feel, because it constitutes 50% of the message, one or two percent of the message. That's the communication equation. So whenever we communicate with our clients, take note of that, so that we now communicate with our clients effectively, whatever it is that you want our clients to know about our products and services. Let us uh, have messages or have information that is passed in all those lines that are that, that are sensitive in what they hear, that that, that 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 address the sensitivity in what they hear and what they see or feel so that they can be of value to clients. Then how do clients evaluate us in our service? Now that you've seen 
that we need to be very careful of how we communicate to our clients. And this is this can be also very gen I can very generically talk about I can I can give you a generic way of communicating, but I want to say that it's all individual, it's all according to your services, according to your products. You want to 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 uh, to make them, you know, to suit them to the, to the to the needs of the client. We want to suit them to the product, to the service. What is it that you are looking at the client active? What is that? What is it that the client comes when the client comes to you? What is it that you'd like the client to experience in your product, in your service? And every so often, ensuring that you that that you are in sync, that these two are in sync. What you have purposed your service to achieve. What you have purposed your, your product to achieve, is it what the client is? Is it what the client is receiving? Is it what they, they get of that service? And why I say then that communicating with clients regularly, getting to get to hear their point of view, getting their emotions, getting all those aspects in regards to our service and our products is very, very critical. So you go to then you customize your messages, you customize your product, you to customize the information, you customize your relationship with your with your clients, so that to, to the products and services, to the needs of the clients, and you have seen the clients also have their needs, so that now you can you can say that customer satisfaction is achieved. It may look it may look uh, like uh, like it's not achievable, but because we have been in business and we have done it, it just takes. That time that it, it takes it takes the effort of taking uh, of, of taking the first step. If you have not been been taking, if you have not been very cautious about how we communicate with our clients, then it's a high time we begin to be very very cautious of that. Because then customer will evaluate us through certain things. Customers will evaluate us on five points. I've come from talking about how important communication is, and I just gave the basics of communication. Then how do customers evaluate us? They evaluate us on our reliability, on how assurance, on the tangibles, on the empathy and responsiveness. Five points our clients will evaluate us. And that's why then when we, when we commit to the client, we ensure that the five tie together with what we need our clients, what we would like maybe our clients to get from our products or services. It's a lot of work. And when you talk about responsiveness, the, the, I'll talk about responsiveness. It's that willingness to assist our customers, that prompt service. It's resolving problems quickly. We say that problems can be solved, especially when you're talking on phone with clients, you should be able to resolve our client or rather you should try your best to resolve a, 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 a client situation. It may be less, uh, it may be three minutes, around the three minutes. And if you're keen, if you're listening to your clients and you, you're hearing their point of view, you are taking time to understand where the, account, the customer is coming from. Then you got, you, 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 and the customer is clear in what the needs are, in the concerns, and you understand who the customer is. Then in three minutes, you should be able to, 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 to provide that to resolve their problems quickly. I'm not saying that they are there on there any basis, but indeed, even three minutes are enough for us to resolve the problem, the, the, an issue, if it's an urgent issue. But you are saying that this does not stop, stop at resolving the issue. You also continue with building relationships, which is very, very critical, and to give clients the experience. So after responsiveness, then we have reliability. How uh, do you do you perform? Do you live to your promises? I talk about who a good leader is. Say what they will do. Say it in a way that is appealing and also meets uh, ensure that they, what they have said they will do. They do it. Being dependable and being accurate. Then in this way, then you are reliable. You pro you make promises uh, that uh, you you get in touch with the client. Do it. You get you you make promises that uh, you you're going to 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 make changes to the account or do what you need to do with the product, ensure that you live up to your promises and that you're accurate. And customers love reliability and they will, they will evaluate you on how reliable you are. And if you don't, you're not reliable, they will look for others who are reliable. How also about assurance? Do you give them assurance? Can they trust you? Do they have confidence in you? 
do you possess the required skills and knowledge to perform what you what you are doing? Whatever service that you're providing with your clients, do you have do you require the skills? Or is there a need for you to outsource those skills so that you can perform what you have set to do uh, in regards to your services and products to the client? Also, in how you respond. So assurance and, and, and responsiveness are tied, tied together. Then the product knowledge. Do you have the knowledge of the product and the service? Do you have the ideal, the reasoning, reasoning skills that the customers can count on? Very, very critical. Having an assurance, a client to evaluate you if you have assured, if you, if you have that, if you meet all that. Then the tangibles is quote, what can be seen or felt. Well, remember what I talked about communication, that 50% of the message is what can be seen or felt. Now, what is tangible in regards to the service that you provide in the service, in the, in the, in the product? What is the physical facility? The, is, the, is the customer telling you, if you tell your customers that you can visit us, our office is on this floor or is, on, is in this building, they, 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 they'll also evaluate you on that. Are you telling the truth? Do you have an, a, a location? What equipment do you use? If let's say, for example, you're making yogurt, do you have the, the yogurt making equipment or do you have the right, the, 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 the right ingredients for, 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 for making of the product, the raw materials for the product that you have? If you're providing services, do you have people who are knowledgeable about the that you're providing? Uh, people who are ready to, 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 who are responsive to the needs of the clients? And also, the uh, targets also, also include stuff which I've talked about and maybe the communication that you make with your clients. So clients will also aid you on that. Clients will also evaluate you on how empathetic you are. Are you caring to their needs? Do you individualize them or do you just take them, do you deal them just as clients? Are you available when you're providing a service? Do you have a backup plan? Do you have people at hand to respond to the needs of the service? Or, 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 or to, to respond to the needs of the clients 24 hours. So they will also, are you empathetic to the needs of the client? If a client needs uh, uh, something customized to them, probably you've had them for long. There are times that you keep customers for so long until you take them for granted. Are you empathetic to the needs of the clients? Certain things are probably difficult times. You reach out to your client and uh, empathize with them and, and offer your, your <coughs> You are uh, maybe messages of 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 folly. If someone is unwell, if someone has lost their loved ones, you reach out to them. So clients will evaluate you based on all those five points. And having seen then how clients will, will rate or will evaluate us, what are those drivers? What are those drivers that uh, clients? Um, We'll, we'll drive, what are those drivers that we can work on uh, so that our clients can be happy or uh, so that we can build uh, ideal relationships or lasting relationships with our clients. It's one is the core product or service provided that meets the basic needs. Yeah, that core product that you have or that core service that you have, does it meet the need of the client? That's why clients come to you. When clients come to you, do, 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 does that product or service meet the need? Are there support services and systems? That's the number two. Is there a technical pro performance? Is, is, a is, is, a, is, a, is a is a is a product performing as it should or as ideal? Yeah, or the service. So there, there is a core, the, 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 the core product, which is you know meeting the basic needs, and there is a support services in place. Then there is a technical interaction, which is the experience which you come from talking about, and lastly the emotional intel, uh, the emotional element, which is the internal feelings, the feeling of the experience that the, the feeling that they, they that we get, the feeling that a customer gets when they have interacted with your product, with your brand, and these last two, five and four, are very important. This is what will give you loyalty, the experience based on all of coming from all those other three. Then the emotional feeling, the good feeling, the feel good. I say customers buy good feelings, buy solution, buy the good, the, 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 that feeling of being, being loved, being accepted, being cared for. So that is what we drive. So ensure that uh, whatever you have, whatever service that you provide has, has, has all that. 
And uh, when you have taken care of that, then you have the power to affect the perceptions of a client. A lot of, I've done a lot of talking. I want to, to give us a small break. And when I give us a small break, during this small break, you can respond to what you see on the screen. You can, you can stretch your arms as you do this. You can take a deep breath so that you can continue internalizing what you have learned. Take a deep, one deep breath in. One out. You can sip some water if you have some water next to you like I'm doing. So that now we go to the last lap. And then on the screen, what you see on the screen, respond to what you see on the screen. interacting with one another. I know we have concerns, I know we have, we have responses, uh, but uh, at this point, I'll do the last thing. I'll do the last session of managing complex situations in customer relations so that after that, we can uh, go to a Q and A where we can respond to the concerns. But I hope you're also asking yourself, the same things that uh, you you know even at this point just reminding us as we started I said I asked us by you know just understand I, I asked us to make a reflection on what a client on, on 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 who on what customers do or customers need when they come to us do do we really you know are we really cautious of what customers need when they come to us and then I also asked to to just think of uh, of maybe that aspect of the need of a client or what is that what does satisfaction mean to us and what is the cost or what is it what was the experience have you ever lost a customer if you have lost a customer how was that for you and maybe the the, the, the bigger question we are saying here or the even as you continue or even interacting with each other in this module is what is that that I have put? What is it that I have in place to take care of the clients that I have currently and those that I, I, I intend to, 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 to take care of in the future? So that uh, if the journey has not been smooth, then you can start smoothening it. Not to say that when things are tough, we, 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 we give up on them. We, we continue, it is, it, is, it is one thing to have the knowledge. I know we have, we have, have interacted or we have even been trainings on, 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 on customer relations, but this one, as you can see, is on building relationships, is, is on giving customers that experience that they have gone to the, to the, to the, to the deepest, to, the, to the, the most bottom of, of customer aspects, which is finding out who our clients is. So at this point, I want to talk about managing complex situations in customer relationships, because they'll always be there. You cannot please everyone. In this world, there will always be times that you, 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 you know, you, 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 some are happy with, with, with what you, or with the service you have provided and others will not be. Or maybe in one way or another, you have reached 
a relation, uh, you have breached a client without without maybe not, not having it been intended. If you have staff with you, probably one of your staff members were not able to, to, to take clients to, or to deal with clients in the right way. Also, considering or not forgetting that they are also difficult clients, you have difficult clients. And complex I'm going to talk about is those clients that you will come across. Because in, in this world, not everyone is good. Even you, even I, I'm not good. Maybe others take you as a difficult person, but you know yourself. So how is it then, how, how, how about in customer relations when you're dealing with people who are not your relatives, people who are not your workmates, but you, yet you need them because if you don't take care of them, others will do it for you. So this, this, are the, this is what I'll, I'll, I'll be dealing with. And, and you're looking at the challenges that we encounter in customer service. Now, again, this is an area that is very broad, but I'm going to deal with those ones that we deal, we, we deal with on a daily basis, or those ones that maybe we encounter very frequently. And so, so some of those uh, include people that probably we see on a daily basis, or people who are not, who, 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 who probably, uh, we we may ignore, but they really, really, uh, inter or, or they really matter for our businesses. In in our businesses, we have very many people that we interact with. You have the ignorant. You will have the you 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 have those who are aggressive. You have apathetic. Those who will not even be, 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 be bothered. Or who will really they your customers that they they, they 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 don't care whether you know they they, they it's the opposite of empathy. They really don't care what you're going through, or they they really don't care about what you need to place. So, and you also have others who are sympathizing when you should not, but also maybe they make an impact in your business. You will have others who are supportive, but probably even being of a support. You will have others who are ignorant, who were out of their ignorance, maybe will, 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 you, you get very critical issues in customer service that requires you taking care of. There are also those who are in distress. There are also those who are unfriendly, and you meet them and you still have to deal with them as a, 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 because they, 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 they matter in your business. And so, in, in, in customer relations, you'll find Different situations. And what is most important or what is most critical is being able to listen. Whatever it is, whatever it is, you need to listen to your clients. You need to nurture your listening skills. You need to be able to, under, to, to, to give all your attention to your clients. You need to be able to, you should be able to empathize, putting yourself, yourself in the shoes of the customer. Whatever the concern, whatever concern the customer has, being, being able to feel them, being able to identify with their journey, being able to respond professionally, even when, when maybe situations or even when, when, when issues may look very, very um, elephant, respond professionally, never, never lose your temper. Also, understanding where a customer is coming from, also, it, it takes also a, 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 a recognizing what's underlying. And uh, you know, just understanding what could they, could, they, could they be having a bad day? Could it be that maybe their perception of the issue is, is, is probably more than um, meets the eye? So recognizing the underlying factors is, is very critical, even as you understand your plans and them. And since then you 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 understand your clients, then you and, and you recall and, and you 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 you, you communicate with them effectively, the more you'll be able to understand them and be able to recognize these underlying factors in, in, in clients' issues. So to be able to then have uh, ways of dealing with difficult situations, ask questions to get clarification and ask those correct questions in professional ways. Yeah, ask questions, not in a, in a, in an accusing tone. You don't want to be the judge and the jury. You ask questions so that you can, and you ask them in a, in a polite way, in a professional way. Give feedback about service. If there is any negotiations, there are any negotiations. Summarize the key points in that negotiation. 
so that you understand the customer as well, so that you, at the end of the day, what you want to get in this communication or in this, uh, in, 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 in the, you are responding to a situation is to win the customer or have a win-win situation where you win and the customer wins, but you don't want to be the one that loses eh? or you don't want to lose on the customer. You'll come across customers who are long winded who will take all your, all your time making inquiries or maybe complaining. People may, people may monopolize others on telephone, but never, you should never hang up, excuse yourself professionally. Probably you have taken three minutes. Again, don't, don't excuse yourself if you've only taken three, uh, one minute. I say you can, you can use three as a basis. If beyond three minutes, probably the, solve, the problem has been solved and you are just repeating. Then you can uh, you can you can you can you cannot you can excuse yourself when it's three minutes or maybe ask the question the, the polite question where you're showing an interest uh, is there anything else that you'd like me to help you so that you now you know you start summarizing or you start winding up the call uh, without making them feel 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 like they are rejected when you have arguments there are people who will argue and argue on phone on phone. That's who guilt trip you and make you feel that you have you, you, you are and make you feel guilty. And indeed, even when you're guilty, apologize. Speak softly. Don't argue back. And many times, anything to do with customers, even when you're not wrong, please apologize. Always accept the mistake, even when you have not contributed to it. Then arguing, don't argue back. Speak softly, ask for their opinion, even when they will not implement. You ask for, them for their opinion, maybe in regards to also how you have responded. And as you are responding, you, 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 you're not also going, I'm not saying that you become passive or you become arrogant. That they are in between being assertive, acknowledging what the, what the issue is, but also giving your views because you also matter in, the, in whatever situation it is, however complex it is. Um, take a break, even in the conversation, you can, at times when the customer is, 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 on, is shouting on the other side, uh, you can just listen, you know, listen, but you're not being defensive, a break, just silence also, also is response. Yeah, so as opposed to arguing back, to, to getting on or, 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 or dismissing the client, or, or also raising your tone, better to take a note and listen. And I believe we have been there, yeah, so maybe we had to do that. And when you also have customers who are argumentative or who will also who will become abusive, uh, remain calm, don't lose your temper. Let the customer know the consequences. Of course, if someone becomes abusive, you can, uh, you can let them know that you will not, it is not a kind. You actually, you, can, you don't use negative words like uh, you're being arrogant or you're being abusive. You, 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 you can put a statement like uh, you, you, the, the, the remarks you're making are not kind, you know, just something like that. And then uh, you, you let them know the consequences. But if this persists maybe for long, so now you can, you can let them know that you disconnect the call if it's on the call. Eh? Uh, if, it is hard, if it is face to face, if you're having, a, if you're dealing with a client face to face, and the argument becomes maybe oh, you, you get out of hand, or maybe someone becomes verbally abusive, that's when now you can bring in somebody else, you can bring in your colleague, or you can escalate the, the matter to somebody else so that it, the, the customer does not feel that they have been, they have been, or they have been told to go out. So you know, you don't, you don't call security when it's not an extreme. Of course, if now someone becomes physical, that's where now you can invoke other people. But if it's in a call, do not hang up. Continue listening to them, but warn them of their experiences, of the, of the consequences, sorry. And threats can also be attempts to intimidate you. Just people will, be thre will threaten you. I'm going to close this account. I'm going to stop uh, ordering this. I am going to stop, uh, going to, I'm not going to pay you at the end of this month. No, those threats, but keep calm. Um, Keep your responses focused on the issue at hand. If they have not, if maybe you have been, you have not provided the right service, 
assure them. Remember, it's about assurance and about responsiveness. Then you, you apply that because that is how you are gauged. You are gauged, gauged then, even when you have a difficult uh, issue at hand. So you keep calm, you keep focused on the focusing on the issue at hand without having to, to, to you know, to, to uh, agree to be intimidated. I talked about being assertive. I talked about again not being an extreme arrogant and also not be passive. Don't allow you know, customers to also trample on you, but be be also professional. Don't dismiss them. Use use the, the right language and use terms like kindness, not, 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 not rudeness. You're being rude, you know, just use that. Uh, and uh, when 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 a, when a customer is is hostile. Sorry, 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 sorry. Let me I'm going ahead. I meant to. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I moved ahead. I was I was talking about uh, customers who are angry. An angry customer is not angry with you, but at the situation, the services that are rendered. So as you're responding to this anger. Remember, it's not directed towards you. And when you think about it that way, then you will not take it personally. Deal with the situation, focus on the situation, respond in regards to the situation at hand, regards to the service, regards to the product, regards to whichever way that uh, the, the client has been let down. Give them that assurance, let them have confidence in you, let them trust you. Then now, thereafter, you can, you can now, then you can find them calm down, they calm down thereafter. Uh, you find that when, when you allow clients to be angry to, 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 to express themselves without interruption, the anger tends to dissipate. And when it does, then you can now become, you can start, when, 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 a, when a client comes down, then you can exchange, you can, you can share solutions, you can give them your views, but again, being sensitive that they, 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 are, they are not having a good day. But do not threaten back. Do not become hostile, and, and do not listen. You eight twenty, eight twenty, where the cat is talking. Twenty is you listening. Yeah, empathize, empathize with them. Just acknowledge whatever it is that they are, they are, they are, they are, they are is the issue. Apologize verbally, not a text. Verbal, say sorry, if it is on phone or if it is face to face. Service, uh, you know, ensure that the service is 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 is, is offered as it's as, as it's meant to be. If you have promised, like I said, in effective communication, you promise to do something, ensure that it is done, and also agreed uh, summarize on the agreed plan, so that even as the, as you're summarizing the issue with the client, then you have you have maybe something written, and where both of you are in agreement, ensure that even as you end the the the, the interaction or you end the call, if it's a call. You are together. You have agreed. You have some. You have some. You have a, a, a plan to work together for the good of the client. So it's very, very critical that uh, you don't allow it to get to you, and you don't let the client also get uh, get power over you. Remain in charge. And there are times that we have to say no. Yeah. You say no, but you, if you can't do it, right, think, uh, get a thank you for the service. Not say you're gentle. You can, you can say no by explaining why something cannot be done and probably giving maybe emphasis on what you can do, not what you cannot do. No, we cannot do this. You cannot just emphasize on what you can do. So at that point, when especially when people are not in their right spaces, do not put policy. Don't be a patronizer. Just use, you know, let the client lead. Even as you are also taking control of the situation, you allow them to lead in that you allow them to be also come in and you also don't interject, but at the end of it, ensure that you have a win-win situation where the client hears, where, the, where, where both of you are in agreement on, on what alternatives are there. Don't make excuses, but apologize, even, even if it means apologizing. Many times, please do so. It has a way of coming customers, eliminate the negative phrases, of problem, of no, of don't, of we can't, or around, you know, just don't use anything that is negative. As much as possible, try and use positive phrases that will initially eventually uh, cool down the plan. Do not refer to other statements. 
which have been done in the past or there was even a client like you here they had a similar problem or you know remember last year or last month you did this don't mention yeah not even if it's a it's a repeat client that, that reference will not be helpful at that point so those situations will be there but you're just saying in the within within the, the time that you have that we can still be able to overcome them have power and be able to still win our clients over, manage those next situations. And I know there are many more, there are many, there, 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 there is much more we can say, but I've just given you the base, the, the, the just the, 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 the very um, west of interaction that we have on a daily basis. It may be physical, it may be uh, on phone, but whichever way we want to be in our class, we want to continue having good relationships with them. And we want even during that time when they have they have issues, even when they are they are they are, they are challenges, what is what is the feeling that we live in, the, in, in that in that client? What is the experience that they get even after maybe going through a turbulent time? Have you assured them of your service? Can they still be can they still count on you? And so I want to conclude by saying. The single most important thing to remember about any enterprise is that there are no results inside the world. The result of a business is a satisfied customer. And that's what we'll be talking about. Talking about how to satisfy our customers, talking about how we can um, we can work, we can we can we can we can come up with journeys that are um, full of good experiences for our clients and, and, and ensuring that we, we satisfy them or we come up with measures that we make sure that we have lasting relationships with our client. And this is something that is continuous. Our, the client needs are, are, are diverse. The client needs are, are ever evolving, but we, we, so we cannot stop communicating with our clients. Even when we, we come across challenges, we still will continue communicating with our clients. And success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in, day out. It doesn't mean that even when you start, when you start a business, you will not come across challenges. Challenges will there. But those some efforts, those, the effort that you make today, you make tomorrow, will, is what will 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 count to the success. Will count to the success of the organization. And great service helps organization uh, drive the uh, customer acquisition, retention, and efficiency that we make that make leading companies successful. So you want to work on customer service every day. You want to have those interactions every day with your clients so that. You can you can be you can think in your business. You can do those those small little efforts on a daily basis. Eventually, you 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 try you acquire more customers. You retain those you have, and you get many more, and you will impact on many more. And you need to also be ready to get closer than ever to our customers. So close that you tell what they need well before they realize it themselves. And this is where this is what this is where we started. That sometimes you may not know where where a, where a customer our customers want. Maybe many times when they come to us, you we may not know what they want. But by our interactions, by our communicating, by our getting close to them, then you'll get to understand what they want. And the more you build relationships, the more we communicate with our clients, the more we get close to them, the more we'll be able to anticipate these needs, even before they have said them yourself. They, you'll, you'll be able to read your client like the back of your hand. Many times, maybe you've even come across challenges, but you've overcome those challenges together. So you will have journeys with our clients that are so deep that we'll be able to understand, yes, you'll understand to be able to understand, I know what, that so-and-so is going to call me tomorrow. So-and-so is going to be able to, 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 to want this service, to want this product, because you have come together and we have worked back it all. As we end um, our pre my presentations, I want to give you 15 steps you can take to create customer service. And this is something we can not take note of as wherever we are so that we can interact better with, we can make our customers better. It's like a summary of what we have shared, but it is just great that we have service. Please take note. <laughs>
So I hope you've been able to see the summary of what we have just been talking about this, in this session. And as we, 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 we end the session, uh, which is what I've just done by giving you that, that, uh, that video, that clip so that you can, you know, we can just remind ourselves some of the things that you have said. I'm asking what has stood out for you. You can now go to the Q&A and see some of the things that you have maybe have, you have talked about or so what is it that you have you have you have you have seen as 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 working for you so maybe michelle you can take me through what what the, the participants what what participants have, have taken or have written yes the &A. yes annabelle i can take you through the q and a uh, of first question is coming from mohammed He's a, he or she is asking, what do you mean by profit center? Uh, what do I mean by profit center? Yes. Wow, what I mean by profit center is that uh, the more customers, the more you take care of your customers, the more you will make more profits. The more you, when you take care, when you nurture those relationships with your, with your clients, your clients will, will, will have faith in you and they will keep purchasing from you or they will keep uh, subscribing to your services. And therefore you can take you can you can you can take that to the bank and that is what you, will, will, will give you profits. That is what will make your organizations last by taking care of customers. I'm just saying it starts with the customer and ends with the customer. Good. It's about nurturing our customers. I hope, Mohammed, we've answered the question. Our next question is coming from Mariam. How can we deal with customers who want immediate results? Especially when it comes to marketing, customers expect immediate increase in sales with just one ad and are impatient to wait for the whole campaign. How can you deal with such customers? Wow. Uh, customers are, uh, would I say, every customer is, is an individual. And I think, uh, like I said, at the end of the day, of course, it's good to, to understand the needs of the customers and, 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 and also understanding where a, a customer is, is, is coming from. But again, you, you, want to, you want to also, you know, walk the journey with your clients. If, if your client is not maybe understanding where you are at, in your, uh, 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 the, the stage you are at in the organization, where maybe they want immediate or they want you to start going to the, say for example, they, tell, they ask you, where is your, where is your product or service on, on the TV or on the print media? It's good for them to understand your journey. Deal with the client at a, at a level. You know, we've, you've said, as, as, as I ended, I said, we want to be so close to our customers that we can, if, we can almost anticipate their needs, isn't it? So get close to the customer so that we can anticipate their needs and let them understand you. Let them understand also where you are. Let me understand that. Let me understand that maybe at that point you, do, you may not have the muscle to do to do to do to, to do the marketing, the kind of marketing that they require or the kind of services that they they they, they, they would expect of you. So deal with them as individuals. Let them understand your journey as well. So that you can remember it's about relationships and relationships is a two-way. Yeah. Back to you, Michelle. Good. Mariam, I hope we've answered your question. And uh, Machoka is asking: can customer relationship management bring any impact in a monopolic or or oligopolistic market situation? I would say that that uh, customer relation has an impact in every market situation because, like I said, your customer perception is your reality. Whatever situation, whatever it is, you know, it's it's even as you market, even as you get out there and and and, and get clients who will come back, who, who will uh, 
if if you if you if you when, when you get back when you get customers you know when you market your products you want customers to 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 subscribe or to take or to take, to take your products or take your services whatever situation whatever the market situation customer management customer experience nurturing uh, customer relations nurturing the customer journey will always be the answer there is no situation, there is no better way of marketing than nothing that you already have, uh, taking care of the relationships so that, and, and also taking care of the interactions because you never know who else in your, you, you never know who else you are impacting just by, 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 by doing, by, by, by relating well with your customers. Maybe somebody has, has paid a, a visit, but they have come, they have come to you with, a, with the other family members, for example. You are relating to them indirectly. So whatever whatever mode of marketing you use, nurturing relations with your customer, nurturing the customer experience, nurturing your your customer journeys is the most effective of all marketing situations that you can take. So it, it makes an impact in all um, manners or channels of marketing that you have. Yeah. Great. Uh, Bart is asking. How do you manage customers who are corrupt or having integrity issues without losing the customer? All the customers have lost is as a, all the customers I have lost is as a result of resisting to be corrupted or to take part, and of course, a few who might didn't meet their expectations. Uh, it's good to whenever we take that's a that's a very very good concern to have. Um, and even, even as you as, as as you also want your customers to understand you, you you the customers you you exist you, your business exists for the customers yes, but again you're going to do what you we talk about we talk in lead, when you did leadership you also talked about ethical ethical doing this business ethically and it's very very critical and if you're doing your business ethically I mean, you're not going to be tuned by a customer certain customers. Who, to, to, to do things unethically so that you can please them. So if you have lost customers because of maybe inethical practices, I, I can I can I can I, I want to let you know that the right customers will still come your way and you don't have to feel guilty about that. I believe there are many others who are able to still appreciate your 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 practices of, of, of business, the ethical practices. So you should not apologize for that. And again, not let your business. It's also good for your customers to know what you stand for. Let them be understand. Let, let them understand your business values, your values as an individual, so that even as they engage in business with you, they know what you stand for and they know what to expect of you. And and and, and eventually, you walk on a journey from a point of understanding. Great. Uh, in relation to communicating with clients through phone calls, someone is asking what replaces the what the customer sees since it makes up to 50%. What replaces to what the customer sees? Mm. When, if when you in, choose in to the, go with calls as a way to communicate the client with the client. Okay, the, 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 the equation I gave is holistic. Okay? The equation I gave, of course, what you see you feel what you hear and the 10% of the word. And now what you may choose, if you choose to go with your, with the phone call, okay, there is what you see, there is what you hear. I talked about the verbal expressiveness, the, 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 the clarity, and also the tone of voice. What the other, the, that is 40%. Now 50% is what they feel. Remember I talked about customers feeling what is the feeling they get? Is there is a tone? There is the, the hearing, but what is that message? What what constitutes? What is the composition of your message? How do you make the customer feel? So probably now the fifty percent is on feeling, but uh, but really this is in the case I gave this as a broad, but I can also look at it if you're not seeing or feeling, or you don't have you're not making a video call with your client, you can uh, you can take that to be what the customer is left feeling based on maybe the interactions you have in the communication, if it's a call, or if, if let's say a customer has a situation and you have empathized with them, you leave them, you leave them in a good feeling. So that feel can go to that 50%. And remember when a client on the other side, 
on the other side, if it's on a telephone, it's on telephone, your plant is able to feel you. It's able to feel your happiness, it's able to feel your negativity, it's able to feel your sadness. So ensure that you give your all so that what they feel then 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 then, then, then gives it weight. Yeah. Great. We have Ashton asking, how do you deal with customers who are not responsive after sending quotation which they had asked for? Ah, when they are not responsive, when they are not responsive, we still have a responsibility of following up with them. <laughs> You're talking about nurturing relationships. You don't stop at, you send quotations, but you don't stop there. You, you, you follow up, you follow up. They never tire, but for you to get, uh, to get, uh, you know, a business, you know, like what, what I would call if, if it's in the context of sale are closed, they, 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 they have, they, they are, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of following up. So follow up with your plans, ensure that if, if let's say you send a good on email, right, follow up an email with an email, uh, follow, find out that they, they have been able to see the good and, and what is their response. You can also find out, you can also maybe, maybe follow up with a call. And you know, and find out whether they, they are uh, they have taken they have the, what what they think about the goods that you sent to them. So don't don't tire to interact with your customers. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Good. Uh, as a follow up, he's asking, how do you ensure you're not too much? Even as you follow up, how do you know when to stop following up? It takes us back to our clients. It takes us back to our clients' needs. It takes us back to our clients' expectations. Along the journey of, 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 of interacting with your clients, you also have different types of clients. You, 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 by the time you, you are following up with your clients, you know, you're also going to get, you're getting to know them. As you're interacting with them, you're getting to see what are their needs. Are these needs still as, as they were when it started? Remember I said, the, the needs of clients are, are evolving. Uh, they're, they're, sorry, are ever evolving. They keep on changing. Could their needs have changed along the way? So that if you start encountering maybe some negative responses, or you encounter um, some 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 uh, some no response at all, you can see that you're not where you are, you, you, you you are when you started. They they are not as enthusiastic as they were at first. Then. Follow up and find out what, what, what is with their needs. Is it, are we still where we were when we started? Then have, have that discussion. Then if you see the client is, is now not, not, uh, not, or rather not taking the follow up well, get to know from them. When, when would you want me to call you? You know, like have, 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 have that. Let, 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 let you, let the two of you agree so that you're not too much. And when you agree, if you agree to call back in two weeks, please ensure that you call back in two weeks. Have an understanding. Remember, I say clients to be taken as individuals, and you not and, and when you feel, of course, it is getting too much or they are not picking, then you give them a break. After some time, follow up with them. Yeah. Great. Rosemary is asking. I mean, the food and nutrition business. We prepare and sell roasted groundnuts, peanut butter. Banana flour, etc. We have lost a few clients who kept delaying making payments after we deliver their orders. What is the best way to deal with this issue of debts without losing such clients? Again, uh, talking about the customer knowing what you stand for. Yes, you want to keep the clients and you want to make the supplies, but you remember you also even you, you are also looking at making profits. If, if clients are not making their payments, you need to have that discussion with them. You need to enter into enter into that understanding with your clients, whereby if it is a weekly payment, if it is daily payments, or it is a monthly payments, you, you, you follow that too. And it would be good if you even have a signed agreement. Now, if someone does not uh, honor that, then you cannot, you cannot, you know, you cannot blame yourself for not again, uh, again, uh, you cannot honor or blame yourself for, for losing them. Because I have said that even as you also do business with clients, you've got to be assertive and you don't want to be taken advantage of because you, 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 you're not, 
you cannot be supplying when when there is no when, when people are not again 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 uh, meeting the end of the bargain. So if you have lost those such clients, maybe follow through with them and 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 find out and agree on the mode of payment. The mode of payment should be very 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 clear to both parties. And this, if this is not honored, and I think this was dealt quite uh, at, at length in the financial mo module which we did sometime last year, and marketing, ensure that you are you, you are in agreement with your clients. You cannot exist to just you, you, there cannot be take 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 and not give. That will not be good. That will not be uh, beneficial. That will not be fruitful in your organization. So be clear and uh, agree with your clients uh, the, the payment bond. And, and ensure that that is followed through. Yeah. Great, uh, Rosemary, I'll, I'll also urge you to join us next week for our debt management uh, training. That uh, I believe will tackle how you go up and collect your debts. Mm -hmm. um, Nancy Ouma is asking, how do you relate with customers who use derogatory language or racist comments while re remaining composed or respectful? Uh, people who use the uh, 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 unfriendly language and also, you know, racist language, you want to you want clear you want to be professional in in the way that you respond to your clients. You want to also point out where uh, where someone is not being kind. I, I use the word kind. <laughs> you 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 know you or you you you, you want to use statements like. Um, that I, I I do not take that I I, I am I, that is not a polite statement I do not take that kindly. Okay, maybe avoid do not, but maybe it's, uh, I, I, we, we could we, we could use a different way. Just just in in a way you're pointing to the clients that you don't appreciate of the kind of the kind of language you you don't appreciate of the language or the kind of communication that uh, they are, are 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 using when communicating with you. And if if there are there are clans who are who who have been who have been with you, you you just get ways of being very very polite and professional, so that they also get to know the boundaries. Even as you as even as you do business with clans, you you we have got to be firm on our boundaries. Again, it's not to say that uh, if, if, since we want to have clans, we, we be trampled or no. Point it out to them. Point it out to them in ways that are kind, and they, uh, when they when they use such language, do not of course join their bandwagon. Remain the professional, remain the the, the, the calm, remain the the, the the focused person, and eventually the, you, you 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 know once 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 you tell them and and and, and they and and, and the, in, eventually they get to you know respond positively. If if they do not. If they do not, uh, this is where you can uh, kindly ask them to, you know, to stop doing business with you, which is, is a last resort. Eh? I believe if it's hurting you, if it's hurting the organization, you again do not want to allow people who are who are not making, who, who are not um, adding value to the organization. But I, I, I am for understanding, coming to an understanding where they where you, you make clear. These are my boundaries. Uh, let us uh, refrain from using of language that is not professional or that is not polite to others. And especially in racist, uh, racism, we, we, in, in this age, we, we, we do not want to entertain any racism because it can, it can have other, uh, other effects thereafter. Back to you, Great. Michelle. Yes. Um, someone is asking, how do you deal with a client who says, do your thing, but are not happy with the results? Do your thing, but I'm not happy with the results. You yes. may want to know what is the thing, what is the thing, what is that that you have done? You may want to go deeper. You may want to see that client. If probably they have raised a comment like that on, the, on your website, say, for example, you may want to reach out to that client, have a session with them on the side, understand what is what what is it that they are not happy with, understand to the you know getting to the bottom of it, what is it that they may have been may have gone wrong with them, 
and uh, if it was involving you, apologize on behalf of the organization. If it was involving uh, your, your staff members or people who are your partners, then apologize also on their behalf, but get to know what is it that makes them happy, and especially if they are continuing business. And never let a comment like that uh, you know, be ignored, because this could also be impacting on others who, who, who are also watching to see how you respond to this client. Follow up, follow through, and and you know on the side, not 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 uh, publicly. Great. Uh, we have uh, another question here from Mahmoud. How can you improve your com your communication means to the customers as a hawker, whereby they shifted from one place to another day by day? Uh, maybe I get the question clearly. You want to improve communication with some as a hawker? Yes, okay. where they shift day by day. Oh, okay. Improve your communication. Wow. So, for a moment to understand, maybe they bought something from this hawker, it wasn't pleasing, mm -hmm. and they would like to communicate the same to this, to this person. But because they are always moving from one place to another, you might not be able to pinpoint him as and when you need to give that feedback back. I, 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 let me give my own experience. I have, I have, I have purchased something from a hawker who, who was on one highway and then by the time I needed them, I, I saw them on another highway long after. And what I did is took their contact. So when you are dealing with hawkers, the best way is to get their numbers. And I know they will be very willing to give to give you the number so that when you need them, when you need them, if they are your client or you're getting services from them, um, then you can get you can you can reach out to them on phone. In this era, most people have a, a, can be reached through a phone. Now, if they don't have a phone, then maybe they can give you a person that you can be touching this with. But if you are a supplier, if you are a supplier to this hawker, then the same thing. You know, you may be buying from them. They may also be your, your so some. They may be the people who bring wares. They import wares. Probably that's the person who has asked this question. And you, yeah, this is one of your of your best uh, 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 clients. So just get their contact and and get to know from them how regularly you wish to they would wish for you to communicate to them, or maybe when they would want to be picking their wares from you. Yeah. Great, uh, Mahmoud, I hope you've answered your question. Um, Murungi is asking, what's the best popular form of CRM and its significance in business? The, the most popular, come again? Form of CRM. Customer and relationship its significance in, system. Yes, and its significance in business. Um, customer relationship managements are, are you know, they, they, they are diverse. Eh? I would not want to say this is the most effective or this is least effective. Uh, what I would say is what is your what is your business like? What is what are your service? What is your business? What is what are your products? What are your services? What works? For, for, for your business. And so whenever you want to have a, a customer relationship management system, you, you look for something that suits your products, suits your services. Where and what kind of, is it, what, what kind of, uh, what kind of touch points do you want your, the, the, the CRM system to have with your clients, to have with, your, with, with the customer? Is it a service that requires a lot of interaction with your clients, if you if if if, if it is a if if it is a if you require a lot of interactions, if the, your services require a lot of inquiries from your from your customers or from your clients, then you want to have a system that maybe where they can be easily where they can access their calls through, or they can reach out to to somebody, say, say a customer relationship representative. That's 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 how that's how I'll take it. But I would take you back to what your business stands for. And every business is unique and the needs are unique. Yeah. Great. I see uh, somebody has also answered that and saying that there is a correct, uh, the, the, uh, 
that the, the, the effective CRM is www.co.ke and they have given okay. their contact. So they have, yeah, reach out to them. If, if some of us are offering the same letters, they also support one another. Yeah, uh, guys, Njoro, Steve Njoro is, has just uh, posted his CRM uh, website. So mm. I believe you can all see it on the chat. Yeah. Um, Innocent is asking, in an organization, how do you deal with situations whereby the top management always pushes customer issues to the junior management, even when they know that you don't have the correct answers the customer wants? Uh, I think this back to communication. I think it's back to communication, and uh, in, 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 it's always good to give that feedback. I, 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 I talk. I, I mentioned uh, feedback is also very critical with your clients. It's good to have uh, to have a, an understanding, even as you. However, if if business is is run by people who don't have the information. That, that it's very important to give that feedback to the top management so that as you deal with your clients, because you're the you're the touch point, you're the one who you're the ones who deal with the client, then you need to have that, uh, you need to have the information that is that is that, that the, the clients are always uh, inquiring regarding the service or the product. So I take it back to communication within an organization. If the junior staff are, are, are the people dealing with the clients. Uh, through it, be it through a system or be it through physical or be it or through calls or emails, then it is important to get the information. Let 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 your let your clients know. Let your your top the top management know the information that you need to have. Have 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 regular meetings where you are giving them feedback on what the needs are of the class that you can be able to to meet these needs during your interaction during your interactions with them. Yeah. Great, great, great. Uh, someone is asking, how can you do that customers always feel and think they are right, even if they are not? Mm, wow, that's a statement that is very, a very heavy one. Customers I think also, sorry, Annabelle, this also relates to a number of questions on the chat where people are complaining, the, the statement, the customer is always right. Mm -hmm. And to what end does this apply? The customer is always right, and there are times that indeed the customer is not right. Yes. They are always right in this sense. Um, when let let's say there is a there is an issue, and the client, even uh, even 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 uh, from 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 a from a business sense, you 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 know that it is you are not at fault. Eh? We always say that you 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 go to the level of the client. Whether they are right or wrong. Now you require this client. You said that the profit center. We said that they are the greatest asset that we have. Even when they are wrong, you don't want to be at a competitive mode with the client. You want to win them back. You want to win them over, however difficult they are. So when we say they are right, even when they are not right, is because you want to do everything you can to keep. We've talked about creating and keeping a customer. During the process of creating and keeping the customer, you'll bruise each other. You'll make, um, you'll make mistakes. The customer will make mistakes. As an organization, you make mistakes. But how about going to the level of the client? And when you go to the level of client is winning them. When you are wrong, apologize. When they are wrong, educate them. Educate the client. When we say they are wrong, when you say they are, they are always right, it's because we want to go to their level. We want to do their very best to keep them, to create and keep them. And keep is very, very broad. And we will not keep customers if you're pointing mistakes at them. If you point mistakes, client, I said they buy feelings. They good, they buy good feelings. They also say that when you don't, if you don't take care of your customer, someone else will. You leave a customer, you just say they are wrong and you lose them. Then what? Then what? So you want to keep your customer even at the point when you, where you know they are wrong. You, you, you want to also, you know, appeal to them, educate them, let them, you know, point out where the mistakes are professionally in, an, in a way that, that, that you as an organization mm -hmm. does not lose them. I think I've gone to the depth. Eh? Yes, yes, you have. I don't know whether it's, I, I believe it's, 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 uh, 
I've answered it the best way I can. Yes, you have. Mm. Simon is asking, how do you deal with a client who just slowly goes quiet? Just slowly goes quiet. Eh? Yes. Follow, follow them up. Follow them up. There is no better way. It's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, follow them up. If they go quiet, unless now they completely don't want to, to respond, then you maybe if they're not responding to calls, write emails. If they clearly show they are not interested in uh, dealing, in, in, uh, in, they are not interested in the communication, give them time to go back. We talked about, I talked about uh, following back, I mean, following up on our clients. It's critical that we follow up with our clients. And as I said earlier, if the needs probably have changed, if you if you have if the needs have changed, find out along their way. Is there a way then we can maybe tweak the, the products or services to the, to the to the needs that are prevailing, that are that, that are that are current. Find out, get get to know them, get to know them without uh, without giving up. Uh, when I talk, when I talk, when I when I did uh, the the module entrepreneurship, I said uh, uh, business people never give up. We, same way, we should never give up on our clients. Great. Kelvin is asking, <laughs> how do you deal with a customer who's verbally abusive whenever you try to collect debt or hangs up on you whenever you, they hear your voice during a call? I believe this will be best answered next week, Kelvin. If you will join us, we'll be handling debt management strategies. Mm -hmm. But Annabelle, you can try and tackle it here and uh, i think I, when i when i talked about the difficult situations like one of the customer when i where i talked about uh, being calm uh not losing your temper and uh, if someone is verbally you know really uh, when they are abusive it, it's good for you to let them know the consequences that uh, you are not, you don't take kindly the, the words or the, you know, the hurtful words that they're using. Don't use the native language. Don't call them a business, the hurtful statements or words. And uh, I, I, would, I would ask, you know, you, you request that uh, they, 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 they change the tone or, or they, you know, you, 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 uh, you, you, you ask them to, to, to politely, you know, you told them uh, politely request that uh, you refrain from using the hurtful statement. And if this persists, we will have to disconnect with this. Now, if every time you call them and they're verbally abusive, then they, this can be escalated. At the, at the organization level, if they are an organization, then uh, probably you have a data, find out what is it that uh, has caused them to, to, to be that angry and bitter good uh, we have a few more minutes and uh joseph is asking um i'm in outdoor gear industry at times i meet clients that are far from nairobi but they want to buy only that only that they lack trust if once they pay they will get their goods delivered what is the best way of approaching those clients and making them trust us talk to them let them know that let them build it's a relationship. I talked about building relationship. How would you? How would you probably? Uh, can you give them the assurance that you're trustworthy? Would you give them maybe past scenarios of people who have done this and done and and and, and done business with you? And especially if they are far away, can you also maybe give them examples of people who have, who have trusted you and you have also uh, delivered? Would you also give them what 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 are the measures you have in place to take care of customers who are out of town? What is like like for example, if you if you if you have to send those goods, who is it that you do? Who is it that you do? You 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 send the goods with? Is it someone they can call and follow up? And uh, probably let's say, let me use an example. Would be the you you, you use um, easy coach. Is easy coach somebody they can call and 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 follow up with? You know, you just give them that. Give them the assurance. Give them the assurance for 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 for, you, for them to trust you because trust it takes time for trust to be built. And probably the reason that they are not willing to trust is maybe the down before. So give them that assurance. I say that is how one of the things that clients will evaluate us is to 
our assurance, give them that assurance and they, they, will, they, will, they, will, they will be on board. And don't give up on them, keep communicating with them. Great, as a follow-up to that, Rosemary is asking, how do you handle clients who want to purchase our products outside CBD, but they're not willing to pay for delivery? And ask them to pick them, pick their products. They're not willing to, come, to, to give them the option is either to pay for delivery, but to, or, or to pick the products. It's simple that way. Uh, because you, as a business person, you will not be the one to incur that expense. So the one is to, to pick it. I, I, I said in business, we also want to have boundaries. Eh? We want our clients so badly, but we, we would not want we would not want to to make business that is not profitable, unless there are other ways that maybe you can send those. Yes, you know. Are, are agree on what else is there a, a certain way is there someone who can pick is there a way you know we can is there somebody who can be trusted with your products without having to pay for transport you know compare notes with your clients but again express the interest in doing business with them don't give up good in relation to that still she's asking uh in a case where you are appreciating your regular customers and sending them a free pack of, of peanut butter and so on, and one is insisting on delivery outside of town. Is it appropriate to charge for delivery since this was an appreciation pack? It all goes back to you. Is it profitable for you? Or you, you want, if they have done lots of business with you and you want to appreciate them, Maybe just like you've given them the package, you may want to incur that extra cost if they are a regular customer. And what message are you sending with that uh, with that uh, free delivery? You, you can you can you can consider all depending on you, all depending on the kind of client, or uh, all depending on um, what relationship you are looking to build. But but I don't advocate for unprofitable unprofitable business. Only if you have the bigger picture, you've seen that there is there, there, there are prospects of even doing much, much more business than, than, than the other. Good, we'll take one last question from Joanne. How do you deal with customers who you actually thought you would, but when it comes to giving you a score, they detract you or are a, are a passive or are passive instead of being promoters? Get back to them and find out what is it that uh, they did not. You did. They did not. You did not do right. If it was maybe uh, um, being rated online, what is it that maybe what what gave them that? What gave them the the reason? What was the reason behind um, giving them that? Giving you that call? Could something have gone wrong? Yes, you may have wowed them, but probably one little thing may have gone wrong. Would they? Would you? Would, they, would, you, would you? Would you consider maybe? making amends of that one thing so that now next time you, 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 you are on the same page. There must be something or there could be something. Find out are they being, you know, are they being um, malicious or is there something? So follow up, it goes back to um, customizing or relationship with our clients. Good, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's our time. It's uh, 12.32. And uh, I'm so glad that we've all been here till this time and uh, participating in all the sessions that we've had. And uh, looking forward to seeing you next week. Please remember we'll be handling module five on debt uh, management strategies. In close relation to all the questions you guys have asked, I believe that will also be an interesting question. And in, sorry, an interesting module to undertake. So Annabelle, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to have you as always and uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next upcoming sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Michelle. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience and pass my regards to Asmaira when she's back. I will, I will. Uh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our time. Uh, we will share the sessions recording tomorrow. These always come a day after the session and they always come on Friday. So watch out for it. 
And for those who missed all other previous modules, you can always find them on our website under financial literacy. Thank you guys and have a good afternoon and happy customer service week. Asante sana, happy customer service week, Michelle as well. Thank you.